Welcome. This video is about my pneumatic bagger. This is made out of all PVC parts and it's from bagging up mushroom substrate. It measures out water and substrate at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and bag out some bags real quick and then I'll go over the design and some of the features and how to set it all up. So it basically has a water meter that fills up a silo over here with water and then when I press a pneumatic control pedal, it's going to open up the knife valve here filled with uh, fuel pellets and soybean hole. And then it's also going to open up the, the two inch knife valve over here, which is just water. And now it's recharging the cylinder. So how that works is I actually have two, there's two pneumatic cylinder or pneumatic switches in here. One of them, it uh, opens the circuit for the solenoid valve up here that opens up the flow. So it opens that circuit up so it cannot turn on. And the second button operates at 40 PSI and that hits the run button. So you'll hear the, the run button go beep as it's dumping, but nothing will happen until I let go of the pedal. And um, when you let go of the pedal, it's when this knife valve shuts and it allows the reservoir to fill. So the reason, the reason why this is better than what I've seen before is because it's dumping all at once. You're not sitting there holding the bag. Um, in a one-man operation, what you'd be doing is, while you're waiting for that cylinder to recharge, is folding and loading. So the only downside of dry bagging is this soupy mess. Now, that's going to be hard to fold up. So what I prefer to do is have a queue of two or three bags. So what you do is you get three or four bags going and then bag out, put it down, grab the one that's been soaking the longest and then put that one. So this is the first bag that you watched me do. That's ready to load now. I can actually take that and, um, and fold it up. It's foldable. And I would recommend to put these in a milk crate or something of the like to keep the bags from, uh, from spilling out everywhere, which actually just happened. So you can see I got them in a milk crate down there. Um, if you want to get fancy, you could do it. If you want to do it with two people doing it, you could have a small little conveyor or like little rollers that the one person is like putting them on. The only thing is you got to make sure they stand up. So you'd have to have some kind of like a milk crate or something to hold the sides of the bag upright until they hydrate fully. So right now this is a half inch uh, float, uh, float regulator. The, the solenoid valve is a half inch and the flow meter is a half inch. I'm now upgrading to three quarters and that should get a lot more gallons per minute out of it or liters per minute is how this reads. Right now it charges in about, I think it's about 15 seconds, 14 seconds, but with a bigger uh, valve, it should flow a lot quicker and recharge in like 10 seconds or less. So I'm gonna do two more bags and then show you guys some of the more close up features of this. And you don't want to go until you hear that beep beep when it's done, when the flow is done. And I just use a cement mixer to pre-mix the substrate. So you can see the inner workings a little bit better. Here is the water meter. And then it has the two air lines coming in. And those go to control valves in there, or control switches in there. I also have a valve here in case I don't want it to recharge when on my last bag I'll flip this and then dump that way it won't fill up the cylinder. This goes off of what opens up so what opens up both the lower valves so this line comes down to here goes to this front one on that and the front one on this so these both open at the same time and then the wires they twist so this one does the opposite. This one will shut as these ones open. Additionally, I have a valve back there that I can shut off. And what that does is it makes it so that that valve can stay open if I want to drain out the contents of this. You could additionally make it to where you have two of these. This is more, the whole 
purpose of this setup was to test out the water silo concept and see how well it worked and how hard it was to get to, di to dial it in, which was pretty easy. Um, from here, you could make it to where you have two silos, four valves, and you could even have it to where you can adjust the length of these and change them out easily, uh, well, fairly easily, if you wanted to. Um, so that'll be probably another model I might, might dream up, might work on. That way you don't have to premix. So you could just have two silos, one silo of fuel pellets and one silo of you know, uh, whatever, uh, soybean hull, wheat bran, whatever you can get pelletized. You can do the wheat bran unpelletized. I think pelletized, it would be a little bit, it would flow a little bit better. I'll have to play around with that. You can also pre-mix the, the wheat bran, but your mix isn't gonna be as consistent as if you are, um, if you're actually metering it separately because the, the bran can settle. So, uh, for the most part, this thing's just slapped together. It's not really a whole lot of building. You don't need to weld. It's just some shelving. Uh, you could also use some wire shelving if you, if you want to. It doesn't have to be this specific shelving. Uh, and then PVC pipes, some screws to hold it together. You don't want to glue these valves together. This is a $200 valve, $180 valve. You don't want to PVC glue it because if you ever want to change it out or use it for something else uh, and it's glued, you're screwed. So you want to just use little screws. You don't want to use um, like PVC glue. Uh, these valves are rebuildable. These ones have stainless steel knife uh, blades, so they should last a very long time. And you can buy rebuild kits if you ever need to. Um, the only air pressure you need is a little tiny pancake compressor, compressor like 90 bucks, something cheap. You don't need to spend a big fortune on, uh, on controls for this. And there's not a whole lot of electrical draw. It's a little 24 volt inverter that powers the, the module and that's really it so uh one of the one of the plus sides of dry bagging is the fact that you don't need a 220 volt or a three phase setup to run a big motor that's going to be grinding through all this wet substrate you're just jumping it in the bag already pre-mixed or even not even pre-mixed it could be one and then the other and then when you when you go over and um when you're mixing your spawn in, that's gonna mix it. So yeah, th there's definitely some upsides to this and it's, it's a low footprint. You could have, if you made a better silo, if I made a, a silo that was square, that would fit a lot better um, for square footage reasons and I could fit a lot more substrate in there. So I think the next one I'm gonna do, especially if I do two silos, it'll be like a two foot by a four foot with a split silo down the middle. So it'll be two four by four, or, I'm sorry, two two by two silos and then that will be, one will be soybean hull and one will be fuel pellets and the bagger will be in the middle of this, the two silos. Um, anything bigger than the four inch valves, you're talking big money. So I don't think you'd wanna go with a, anything bigger than a four inch, like the six inch valves are like $500 each, four or $500 each. So I think the four inch is that happy medium to where it'll work for pellets and it's cheaper than you know, having somebody fabricated or whatever. This whole getup is about $600, I wanna say, in parts. Uh, 400 of it is just these two valves, and the control itself is about uh, 60 bucks, almost 100 bucks when you include the case, the uh, sensors, and all the fancy fittings and everything. Um, there's two options for the, for the water. If you don't want to extend the wires, you could actually have the valve and sensor down here and then just run a pipe to up there, like a half inch PVC pipe or three inch PVC uh, pipe that goes to up there. Um, that would be for if somebody's like very, very afraid of soldering or anything like that, but you are gonna have to solder in the run button on the back of this. And I'll have another video on how to, how to wire in to the back of this to where you don't have to press the run button on the, water meter, you can just have it to where when a, a cylinder actuates, that pressure sends the pressure into your, your control box and then that trips a switch that'll hit the run button for you. So from, what, from other people that I talked to about dry bagging, they were saying that one of the downsides is the fact that you'll get like sawdust on your bags, but you can see I'm dumping both at the same time and it's not getting sawdust on the bags. So that already fixed one of the drawbacks of dry bagging. You're not gonna have that issue of uh, the sawdust. And the issue with the sawdust powder is that 
it doesn't let the bag self-seal. So self-seal, and this is the beginning of my stage two lab. Self-sealing is when the bags kind of form a vacuum, like right there, and then um, from there it kind of seals themselves. If they're very dirty, they won't do that. These didn't form the greatest seal, but it's not dirty. You know, you, the bottom line is that's, that's a pretty clean seal right there. So, yeah, and uh, you can see the flow hood I'm, I'm setting up right now. I think I'm gonna do one horizontal, one vertical, kind of see how the difference is, see what I like. And uh, for the vertical one, I have some, pl some uh, poly, thanks to my boss, Sergeant Batres. He gave me some uh, plastic that he had, and that'll be like the front window. So, yeah, hopefully like my video, I'll be making more baggers. I'm gonna be making stage two to this one soon. This is, like I said, a concept test on the water cylinder, and it works. So now I'm gonna be making a double silo probably either two knife valves or one big knife valve with a split down the middle of it. And I really want to try to make it to where it's variable displacement to where I can run different mixtures and different percentages. So hopefully you like this. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you want to help contribute to my page, you can become a patron on patreon.com slash Myers Mushrooms. And if you want to check out mushroom equipment, including the parts I use to build this bad boy, you can check it out with the link below. Myers Mushrooms, uh, mykit.com slash Myers Mushrooms. And that's all the tried and tested and trialing uh, equipment that you can buy for mushroom growing. Thank you and keep on mushrooming.